back at the drag strip doing some testing with Ratsuki. So, made it through the licensing a couple of weeks ago. Come here a little closer, hon, so I can hear. And uh, anyway, as you noticed in the other video, it had uh, some uh, surging and missing, not missing, but surging going on from top of third through fifth gear. So, um, if you watched my previous video I just made a couple days ago, um, I got the panels gone that were covering the carburetors right here. Uh, ran perfect on the dyno, uh, good air fuel. I did second through fifth gear pulls, about three or four, four or five of them. It doesn't miss a lick on the dyno. So we'll see if we're moving those panels. The panels are right here, only about an inch from the outer two carb bells. So all this air is coming in here because it was speed related. I get to about 115, 120, and start uh, 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 uh. So what I'm thinking and hoping is, because I had that panel only an inch away, it's coming through there and the velocity between the edge of the panel and the carburetors, it's screwing with the one and four carburetor, sucking it out of the intake track. So we'll see, I could be wrong, but it's the only way to find out is run it today. So gonna make some test passes, not super hard leaves. I just wanna see if it runs and then I can lean on it a little bit. So we'll see you in a while after we get a couple of passes.
Thanks, baby. I know, Big Jake. You want to run, baby. You want to run. Hey guys, it's Dale. Well, it's the day after the track uh, test and tune day. Uh, I only made three passes. Uh, the panel remover did not cure the problem, <coughs> but I did learn something. Uh, basically, um, it was still there, pretty much the same condition where it would surge. On the dyno, remember it runs perfect, air fuel, no starvation, float bowls appear to still be filling. <clears throat> the carbs are about a 23 degree angle though. Uh, Paul Gas says he's ran up to 25 millimeter angle on his own bike, but uh, he also has the billet high, high volume bowls on his own bike, which he doesn't think are totally necessary. But what I did to be sure it wasn't electrical my electric shifter, um, the hot side of the coils are going in and out of the control box all the time. And just to be sure, after the first pass, I bypassed my shifter completely. I cut the wires, took it out of the loop, and I throttle shifted the thing, you know, like a dog, and uh, ran it on down through there. I also uh, removed my little uh, shift minder that I have mounted on top of one coil. Uh, with rubber and stuff between it, which has always worked fine. I took that off, isolated that at the same time. No difference. Uh, still did it. So, what I did <coughs> was I bumped the RPM up to 11,000. The motor seems a little more happy there. Um, I left a little harder, still a 150 something, 60 foot. You know, not really worried about that yet. And uh, <coughs> shifted it right at the shift light. And uh, anyway, what I did was I really concentrated on staring at the air fuel gauge on the bike. I don't have a Wego, it's just a gauge. I wish I had a camera I could mount to take a picture of it, which I might come up with on my helmet or something. But anyway, I, uh, once I got it in fourth gear, <coughs> I let it run through from, oh, geez, probably a thousand foot, a little past half track in fourth. It still doesn't over rev it. And I left it in fourth, and I was able to see the gauge, and absolutely, I saw 16, 14, 16 to 1, a couple times. I let it wring its neck through the lights, I saw 16 to 1. So, <clears throat> I know the delivery from the tank is good. I know now the panels and that caused the problem. I know it's not ignition. I put a fresh set of plugs in it, too. So... It can only be really two things, well, in my opinion, and that is the needle and seats aren't flowing enough or the float bowls will just not keep up. The dyno doesn't put the load on it or the time it takes, you know, going down the drag strip. On the dyno, I roll it on in second and I kind of ease it to it because the thing is spin the tire and I'm, so, I'm running it second, third, fourth, you know, second, third, fourth, and fifth. On the drag strip, I'm taking off from a dead stop. It's all hooked up. I lay into it. And of course, you got the wind resistance, and it's a longer pull. And uh, it happens in fourth gear. I ran a 927, <laughs> can't believe it, at only 137 miles an hour, going through the lights in fourth gear, and it's geared for five. So. That's pretty stout. I couldn't believe it for running so crappy. So, anyway, uh, that's what I learned. Uh, I'm going to investigate the uh, billet bowls. I'm going to pull the carbs apart tomorrow and make sure they have the correct needle and seats in them. You never know. They might not be flowing enough. So, uh, we'll get there, trust me. But, uh, meanwhile, see this foot right here? 
I was loading the little mini bike in the trailer that we used to pull the bike back with and I stepped in a big old divot and I folded my ankle and both my ankles have been toast before and cast everything from dirt bikes, other accidents, slalom skiing and so my right ankle now is all effed up and uh, it's only on the right side so I hope it heals up in a few weeks but I'm out of commission man I can stumble around and work on the bike it's so uh, what a bummer so anyway I'll see you next time hope you enjoyed the video of the track and uh, don't worry we'll make Ratsuki run and when it starts running it should run pretty hard so I'll see you later you guys take care of yourself be safe out there and appreciate you watching